When I talked about the ball haul we bought a couple months ago, I kind of went through a little bit of the process of what goes into buying these cars from auction. The end result is really what matters. And we think they kind of speak for themselves here. We're proud of this car. We have a chair. My mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. That's the experience that we have at Subarex. For 12 years, we've been purchasing vehicles, typically insurance, auto, total losses, bringing them to our shop, evaluating them as a build car or a parts car. We give it our best guess, but we're in the risk business. We're in the business of bringing it in, and then once we get it into the shop floor, adjusting whether a build car ends up being a parts car, a parts car can end up being a build car. This has been the experience of Subarex. So this little 2012 Forester has just that kind of a little backstory. I'm gonna have Drew step in here and share with you just a little bit of what the Odyssey was to get this little 2012 ready to deliver to our next satisfied Subarex customer. I'm gonna get philosophical for a second. Have you ever heard of the concept of bounded rationality? It basically states that human beings are rational creatures and we'll try to make the most rational decisions in any given situation based on the information we have and the circumstances we find ourselves in. This actually maps perfectly onto what we do at SuperX. When I talked about the ball haul we bought a couple months ago, I talked about a little bit of the process of what goes into buying these cars from auctions and the type of information that we're presented with. And this Forester behind us is another solid example. This thing was listed as having flood damage. And just for a little bit of context, flood damage is something that sounds pretty scary to a lot of people, but not necessarily to us. When Hurricane Sandy hit in 2011, 2012, somewhere around there, we spent a lot of time and effort putting together a process to fully and, and genuinely rebuild a flood car. It basically boiled down to taking a flood shell that had no structural damage, completely stripping everything out of it down to the frame and then fully repopulating it with a matching collision car. So you ended up with the best of both worlds. You had no structural damage on the shell and you had no water damage on any of the components. That in mind, flood damage isn't necessarily something we're averse to. So we see this listed as flood damage and we know that worst case scenario, we're still pretty well equipped to deal with it. But that was only the worst case scenario. Sometimes when well, the auction company is feeling kind and benevolent, they'll actually mark on the car the flood line, show you how high the water got. Because it can make a big difference. Water over the carpet is one thing, water over the dash is another entirely. This one had a water line almost to the top of the rocker panel. That could mean anything, but it didn't look like any water had actually gotten inside and caused any of the electrical type of damage that are the main concerns with the flood car. So we kind of rolled the dice on it, we got it in, and it actually looks like that was pretty accurate. It doesn't look like water got anywhere near the inside of this car. It doesn't look like it actually has any kind of flood damage at all, but it's got a blown engine. And again, that may be an issue for, you know, a typical used car dealer, but it's not really a big one for us. Uh, assuming the rest of the car was, you know, up to our standards, it's not a big deal for us to swap in another engine. So we checked it out and this thing only has 74,000 miles on the chassis and seems like it's been pretty well maintained over its life. It seems mechanically solid all around except for the locked up engine. So we swapped one in with 45,000 miles and then fully evaluated the car. We did determine that it cosmetically didn't quite live up to our standards. So we did an all over paint job. It didn't have any you know, major damage, just kind of typical used car scuffs and dings, but a little more than we were comfortable with. So we brought it up cosmetically to our standards. We went through it all mechanically and it's a great solid car now, but it also just highlighted a little bit more of the type of risks that we take. And like Jim was talking about, the whole box of chocolates nature of what we do, how we never really know what we're getting into, how we make some pretty educated guesses. I think we do a pretty good job at it, but ultimately they're still just guesses. So now that you've heard the backstory on this little piece of Subarex chocolate, let me tell you this. We started the first concept of Subarex clear back in 2008. We have built hundreds of cars. Over the last couple of years, we've ramped up, built a new shop, stepped up production, and still we're not meeting demand. People have come to realize that our cars are beautifully restored, fully inspected, and highly dependable. It's a thing. We are building momentum. Our customers are believing in us. People are starting to take notice, and we are along for the ride. 
We are in this for the long haul. We believe it's a great value concept for our customers to save thousands of dollars over a comparable Subaru that you find flipped to a car lot and for sale. Don't fear the R title. Now we know our cars aren't for everybody. There are people that would never consider buying a reconstructed title, their loss. So we're thrilled with what we do and we're thrilled with the responses that we're getting from our customers in the community. It's only up from here. So thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe if you're interested in what we're doing. It only helps others to know just what a great value you can find at Subrex, pre-owned and rebuilt autos. Thank you.